What is good, YouTube? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kazim, and I post college programming and lifestyle videos here on the channel. It's a little bit of everything that relates to me, so you guys should definitely go ahead, subscribe down below, and hit that bell so you don't miss out when I post new videos on this channel. So today, you guys already know by the title, we're gonna be doing a lead code with me. And this is something that I said I wanted to do. I wanted to do more CS related videos, more coding related videos, programming, all of that. So I'm doing this lead code with me. And you know, I'm in my natural habitat. We super chill right now. I got the hoodie yeah. on. Um, I'm in my bed, you know, we chill. We just about to answer one. I think I'm gonna just do one question for today. One easy lead code question just to kind of warm up, you know, and practice. Um, I think this video is gonna be really great because it allows me to just talk out loud um, to you guys. And that's exactly what I'm doing actually in an interview. I'm trying to get an internship. You have to be able to talk and communicate and walk through your problem. So I think that is gonna be perfect for this video. So yeah, we're gonna get started right now. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know what lead code is, Lead code is pretty much just an online resource that you can use to answer coding questions, different types of coding questions. They have a bunch of problems on lead code. And this is extremely useful for um, online interviewing because being that we are in a pandemic, all of these interviews are online. So this kind of virtual setting on lead code is very similar to the internship or job process you interviewing. Um, it's gonna be very uh, similar. So it's great practice. What I'm actually gonna do I'm going to time myself as I answer this question just because that's what I like to do to practice. Um, it gives that little bit of pressure and um, it kind of simulates what it's really going to be like um, in a real interview. So I set my timer for like 18, 17 minutes. So I'm going to set it to 18 minutes right now. And I'm just going to choose a random lead code problem. Um, like I said, it's going to be easy because we're not... Their easy problems are, they're beginner, but it's like they can go into depth with the begin the easy problems. So we're just gonna do easy for now. So let me sh let me actually record my screen so you guys can see everything that I'm doing. So I think I'm going to just do. Let's see. Um, I'm just gonna do this problem right here. Two twenty eight summary ranges. It's an easy problem. Um, I have my timer here. I'm just gonna set it for 18 minutes. And okay, it started. Let's click on it and see what we got going on here. Okay, so you are given a sorted unique integer array nums. Return the smallest sorted list of ranges that cover all of the numbers in the array exactly. That is, each element of the nums is covered by exactly one of the ranges. And there is no integer x such that x is in one of the ranges, but not in the nums, in nums. Okay, each range A, B in the list should be output as A, B if A does not equal B. A if A equals B. Okay, so, okay, so I'm given a function here. It takes in a nums list a list of integers and it returns a list of strings so I know that I'm going to be returning a list of strings um, so this is a little confusing a b if a does not equal b a if. so I'm going to look at the examples here because they give example one two three four and five so I have a nums list and it's going from zero one two four five and seven. So you have all of those elements. Um, the output is a string, a list of strings. So zero to two, four to five, seven. The ranges are, okay, so I think I understand what I have to do. Um, okay, yeah, so I'm given a list of integers, um, nums, and I have to actually create these ranges. So, um, yeah, so ranges that cover all of the numbers in the array exactly. Right, okay. So, I start off with zero, then I check one, and then one is, is going in ascending order from, so zero, one, two are all in ascending order. Then I get to four, and I see that 
I skipped three there. So this in itself is a range. So zero, one, and two, um, that's a range in itself. So you create a string um, here from zero to two. And then you have um, a new range starting off with four. And then you check and five is going in ascending order. And then you go to seven and you see that seven kind of skips six there. So you have four and five is a range of its own. And then seven is the end. It doesn't have anything after that. So seven is on its own. So that's what you're returning. And if you look at example two, um, so you start off with zero, then you go to two and you skip to one. So zero is on its own. Then you go to two and then you go to three, four. That's all a range before six. So you have two to four is a range. And then starting off with six, and then you see that it does, there's no seven. So six is on its own and then eight um, to nine. So eight to nine. Okay, so that makes sense. So, okay, okay, okay. If I have an empty nums list, I'm just returning an empty output. Uh, and then, yeah, so I'm just checking. So that makes sense. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do here is I know that I'm going to be returning a list of strings. So I'm just going to create a result list. And I need to sort of iterate through the list that I'm given. So I could I could use a for loop here to iterate or actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use a pointer. So I'm just going to say P for pointer is equal to zero. And um, I'm going to iterate through the nums list. So I'm going to say while P is less than the length of my nums list. And I'm going to have some sort of conditional statements here. So there's different constraints, but I need to pretty much check to see that it's going in ascending order for every single element inside of the nums list. So uh, what I need to do also is like find a way to store the ranges as well. So I'm, what I'm going to create is a ranges because these are all integers at first and I need to change them into strings. So I'm going to create a, I'm going to create just a, either a, I'm just going to create a ranges list. Yeah, I'm going to create a ranges list. Um, and then I can change that as we go. So I'm going to start off and I'm going to say, um, so at one point I'm going to start off with the beginning element in the list. And it also, it helps to look at the examples. So I'm starting off with zero and I'm saying, okay, so I'm going to say if the length of ranges if it's equal to zero, then I know that I can add that into, add the element that I'm currently on into ranges. So I'm gonna say ranges that append. Uh, my, pointer, my pointer is currently at zero. So I'm gonna take nums and uh, set it equal to, I'm gonna index it to my pointer. So I'm appending that into my ranges list um, let's say okay let's say so let's say um, that my so let's say my ranges list is not equal to like the length of it is not equal to zero then I have to check to see if it's going in ascending order so I'm going to say else if it ranges and I'm going to take the the last element that was added into ranges I'm going to say else if it ranges of the negative one index is equal to my current um, element that I'm on minus one if those are equal to each other then I know that I can add that into my ranges list, the current element that I'm on. So I'm gonna say ranges that append um, nums of P. So, 
So let's say that these first two conditional statements are not true, then I'm going to create an else. And it's possible that, um, so I know that, okay, so I have to sort of check here, I need to check, I checked if it's empty, then I'm adding that initial element, then I'm saying if it's not, then I'm checking the most recently added element into ranges and I'm comparing it with the num that I am on and I'm seeing if it's equal, the numbers are equal, that shows me that it's going in ascending order and I'm adding that into my ranges. If I get to my else statement, then that means that these are actually not equal. And if they're not equal, then I need to create this string to add into results. So it's possible that my ranges list is going to be equal to the length of it is going to be equal to one. So I'm going to say if the length of ranges is equal to one, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a string to add into result. So I'm going to say result dot append the uh, string version of the ranges of zero. So I'm adding that into my result. So let's say the, uh, the length of ranges is greater than one. So I'm just going to create an else statement. If that's the case, then I need to create sort of what looks like over here from zero to two, like this sort of string. So I need to create that. So I'm gonna say just res is gonna be equal to um, a string of the be uh, initial one. So I'm gonna take the string of ranges of the zeroth element plus this arrow figure that they're saying to make plus a string of ranges all the way to the end and I'm going to append this into my results list so I'm going to say results that append this new string that I created res and so I have those two conditions and then I also want to make sure that um, I'm starting this over because when it gets to this point then I know that range ranges needs to be equal to an empty list again so I'm saying ranges is going to be equal to an empty list here um, so it's possible that so yeah so after I'm done with all of this I know that I want to increment my pointer so I'm gonna say plus P plus equals one so that increments the pointer and I can iterate through all the elements in my nums list and then what I also want to do is return my result return my result at the end here so I want to actually go through this and make sure that this actually makes sense before I go ahead and run it on the code just because in an interview I know that you're, you're not going to be able to run it sometimes, so it's good to just walk through your code and talk it out. So I know I have a results list here, and I have my pointers equal to zero initially, and I also have my ranges list that I'm going to be using to store all of the numbers. And I'm saying while p is less than the length of the nums list, then I'm um, having these three conditional statements. I'm saying if the length of ranges is equal to zero, then I'm just appending the current element that I'm on into my ranges list and then I'm saying um, if ranges of negative one the most recently added element into the ranges list is equal to the current number that I'm on minus one so if these if this equation is true then I know that it's going in ascending order so I want to add the number that I'm currently on into my ranges list and then if both of these two conditional statements are not true and I'm going into this else and I'm saying if the length of ranges is equal to one then I need to create just a separate string that I'm adding into my results um, else if I'm creating this um, a sort of range string that they're asking for from the initial string in my uh, range list all the way up into or the initial integer in my range list all the way up into the final one so I'm just 
creating that string and appending that into my ranges list and then or my result list and then I'm also making sure that range is going to be equal to an empty list so I actually um, I have like five minutes left here I'm on my timer in a real interview I won't be able to really time myself um, like that but it's good to know I actually want to just test this to make sure I think I may be missing a part um, but I want to see so if I have a so if I start off with this, 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, and 7, um, I'm going to start off with 0, and 0 is going to be added into my ranges list. Then I'm going to go to 1, and then um, my length of my ranges is going to be greater than 0. So I'm going to go to this else if statement, and 1 is actually going to be equal, 1 minus 1 is going to be equal to 0. So I'm going to append that into my ranges list. Then I'm going to go to 2, and 2 is going to be 2 minus 1 is going to be equal to 1 so I'm going to append that into my ranges list and then I'm going to have 4 and 4 is not going to pass this conditional statement here so it's going to go into this else statement and it's going to say oh okay so it's going to say else if then create that sort of range from 0 to 2 and add that into my result but what about 4 so I think that's where I have an error there. At four, I need to actually do something. So at four, I need to actually um, add that into my, yeah, so I need to actually add, so ranges is need to um, contain the current element that I'm on. So I'm gonna say nums of P. Range is gonna equal to that and then it could continue. So it's even possible that I'm left with an element inside of the... Yeah, so it's possible that I'm left with... Um, or actually what I wanna do is I just wanna have an edge case here in the beginning. And this is gonna say if the length of nums is equal to zero, then return an empty list. That's just gonna be an edge case that I have. And then also, if I go through this and I end on seven here, so I'm looking over here, if I end at seven, then, so seven, so four or five is gonna work, then seven. So seven is just gonna be in this range, ranges list, but it's not gonna be added into my um, result. So what I want to actually do is say if the length of ranges is greater than zero, then I pretty much need to do this, what I have here. So I'm just going to copy that. I'm sure there's probably more efficient ways to do this, but yeah, I'm just gonna copy that because that's the same thing. Um, if the length of my ranges is greater than zero, and I'm checking if it's equal to one, then create just a single string. If not, create from the, yeah, okay. So, yeah, I have about a minute left on my timer. I have not ran my code. But I kind of went through it and I think that this makes sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and run it and see what I get. Okay, so it actually passed the test um, the first time around. So that works out. So I'm gonna go ahead and submit this and see. And it worked, let's go, let's go. That's a great feeling y'all when it actually passes like one time around without you having to fix any errors or anything like that but that's a really great feeling because in an actual interview um, you're not like most of them you're not gonna be able to run the code so you kind of just have to bank off of what you have written down to um, and you going back and checking to see if your solution 
makes sense and is correct. So this could definitely, so it says 32, faster than 32% um, percent of Python submissions and the memory is less than, so I guess that's all right. It could be better. I know this could be better, but yeah, this was not the most efficient um, algorithm that I created, but it does work. It does work and it does pass all of the lead code tests. So that was fun. <laughs> that was actually fun. Um, yeah, I'm just going to do one problem. I'm sure this is like already a 15 minute video or something like that. Uh, or 18 minute because that's how long my timer was so it's probably around 20 minutes or something but that was really fun um i really enjoyed doing that and talking that out loud this this is the first time i'm recording myself uh answering a problem so uh, i really enjoyed that but uh let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section be sure to give me a thumbs up on this video and subscribe to the channel if you have not already like i said i make college programming and lifestyle videos and I'm really excited um, at the path that this channel is growing and going. So make sure you guys stick around and you subscribe and you don't miss out. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace out.